heard. And we are live. Thank you so much, everybody, today for joining us on the first official episode of the Self Empowerment Project. We've got some amazing and wonderful guests here today that are going to take a couple of seconds to introduce themselves. And I'm thrilled to death for you to get to meet them. We've also got a live audience in the chat today that are going to be able to ask some amazing questions later on in this episode. So let's take a beat and meet everybody here. Um, Becky, why don't you go first? Yeah, so thanks so much for having me on the podcast. I am absolutely honored to be here. Um, so my name is Becky. I'm actually from Canton, Ohio. I um, uh, originally started in medicine. That's my background. So I'm a, a physician assistant. I have uh, been practicing medicine for 15 years. Um, nine years ago, I was working in the cardiology clinic and loved that clinic and started um, actually doing health coaching after hours because my patients were asking me how to get healthy, how to get off medications and just felt like I needed to serve them in a different way. Um, so just immersed myself in the coaching culture and absolutely loved the experience, um, loved being able to have people come back in, patients come back in to see their cardiologist and want to see me and tell me they've been able to get off medication. So it was incredibly empowering for them and also for me just to be able to help somebody in that way. Um, transitioned actually to leadership coaching because that cardiology office unexpectedly closed and I lost my job. So talking about new beginnings, um, that was <laughs> something that was incredibly stressful for me because I loved that culture. I loved the people I was working around. They were like family to me. Um, but I think that really was the catalyst for me uh, in understanding that communication and leadership were essential. So a um, couple of years after that, took a leadership course and then found myself the last two years transitioning to really helping medical offices and teams um, and just individuals become better leaders and better influencers in their own lives. That is beautiful. That is an amazing journey. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Iliko, why don't you go next? So hello, everybody. My name is Ildiko. Uh, I'm, I'm coming from Europe, Hungary, and currently living in Panama, Central America. It's been <laughs> all over the, it's been a long journey, and uh, I love traveling. And um, I was always looking for things on the outside because I thought the next adventure, the next shiny object, whatever, it's going to bring me all the answers, the love, the success I was looking for all my life. And it turned out that we have all the answers within. So the past 20 years, I have been on extreme amount of courses and trainings, and I kept going and I started finding my answers within. Uh, I do intuitive reading. I'm an intuitive coach. My vehicle is your given name and your date of birth, which gives me uh, a lot of information about your learning lessons and uh, what we are bringing from past lives, how to get unstuck, to actually activate your intuition and step into your power. And we actually do know a lot of things we have in the pocket we are not using. So that is the question. Uh, like Becky, I did, I'm a health coach as well. I find that extremely important that you work not only on a soul level, but on a physical level as well. Mm -hmm. And new beginnings, I'm extremely good at that. <laughs> the, <laughs> the question is, what do you commit to today? So at the moment, I'm doing 75 hard, which is like 45 minutes outside exercise, 45 minutes inside. It's the question is when you are ready to commit. So you can start today, tomorrow, or whenever you are ready. Thank you. That is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing with that, sharing us, sharing that with us. <laughs> All right, and next we have Heaven. <clears throat> okay, um, hi, I am Heaven. I'm originally from Phoenix, Arizona. I live right now in Northern Colorado. Um, I am also what you would, I guess, call a spiritual mentor and an intuitive coach as well. Um, I got clean when I was 21 years old. And so that kind of started my journey into, okay, there's got to be more than this type of feeling. Um, I was always searching again, just like she was talking about for something outside myself to fill myself with. And so it was like, when I got clean, there was no 
um, buffer between me and the real world. So there was either going to be a change within me or a change within the world. And I'm obviously not going to change the world in one day. So I started with myself. And so my whole journey has been a new beginning. It's like learning to live, like actually live um, alive, free and sensitive in this world. Um, so I'm all about helping women and men reclaim their power so that they can go into this world without that like burden of fear or um, using something else to kind of keep us at a distance from feeling our feelings and feeling the world and being alive and experiencing the here and now. Because <clears throat> my thing now is like, when you start getting rid of all the crap that we believe and you start finding like true authentic freedom, it's like life gets good. Life gets really good. And I want to offer that to other people. I think we all deserve to be happy, joyous and free. And so it's like, we have to find the way to do that individually. It's not a one size fits all. It's, you know, everyone has to kind of put in what they want to get out of their own life. And so that's kind of what I do. I facilitate sacred space and I just kind of hold people in that. I also am a lover of life. So I love to hike, I love to create, I love music, I love to dance, I love all that type of stuff. So um, my clients normally come in and they're like, holy crap, there's so much that we can do for healing. And I'm like, yeah, I use it all. I use it all, but um, that's me. And I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for letting me come on. All right. Thank you so much, Heaven. All right, and Silk, tell us about you. Hi, I'm Silk and I'm, first of all, I want to say thank you for having me on this program. I'm really honored to be here today. Now, I'm the founder of Inner Hippie Books, which is a multi-author publishing company that provides a virtual fireside for successful women who've broken free from society's expectations and now want to tell their stories to the world to inspire other women. And uh, my journey is quite colorful. I'm an expert at new beginnings. I'm an expert at creativity. It's all sort of um, weaved itself into my life. I mean, I started off going to high school and fully expected to um, study, go university. Instead, I packed my bags, went backpacking, ended up uh, in the UK. I'm originally from Germany. Then um, met my husband of now 30 years and decided just on the spur of the moment to stay there. We formed a rock and roll band and ended up gigging for 20 years all over Europe. So um, music is very much my, my passion. It's in my blood. I'm a bass player and play ukulele and all sorts of other instruments. And um, my, my journey continued and I ended up working in corporate, not liking it, I've been a freelancer, a translator, going through all sorts of different changes in life until I ended up as an energy healer, Reiki master, chakra dancing facilitator, and um, then again, life changed again last year, like it did for so many other people. I needed to move online quickly because my Reiki business was completely brick and mortar based. And uh, then I've ended up founding the Inner Hippie Club, which is a place where I teach women how to release their inner hippie, which is that carefree teenage feeling that we all had once before life got serious. And I teach them how to have fun again and how to remember that it's okay to be a teenager occasionally. And through that work, I've changed yet again and I've now found it in a hippie book because I've come across so many wonderful stories from these women that just need to be told. I decided like somebody needs to go out there and provide a platform where women can tell their stories. And I'm, I'm really passionate about that. And yeah, so uh, that's where I'm right now. That's an amazing journey you've been on. <laughs> <laughs> all right so today we're going to be talking all about new beginnings and i'm super excited because this is a new beginning for us i know personally i started off helping people self-publish their books and then there was helping them with their online businesses and now i'm a podcaster so lord only knows what's going to happen next <laughs> <laughs> so let's open the conversation with what is your favorite part about a new beginning. With me, it's the joy that can come from it. Like the butterfly nerves that go, this is a new beginning. Oh my goodness, where am I gonna go next? What about y'all? For me, it's the opportunity. The new opportunities 
you never know what's around the corner and that's really exciting. I would have to agree. I think it's just like the, the opportunity. It's like, what could happen next? Just like the possibility of what's out there. It's just, it is exciting. Like even just the start of like a new month can mean like something exciting and new. If you look at it that way, it's all about perspective um, and how you shift your perspective to decide something can be a new opportunity or something can be exciting. So that's the way I look at it. And we often think about New Year's resolutions in that same way. It's like the beginning of a new year, what could possibly happen for the new year? Um, but just having the perspective and the insight that anything um, could be good and, and fresh and new. Absolutely. Yes, that is so true. Um, I think it's very important that you actually check in with yourself what makes you feel good and you start focusing on that implementing fun in your life on a daily basis because we really we intend to take life too seriously but if you don't have the balance between fun and uh, the serious things in life because that kicks in as well so what i'm actually doing i'm having fun time every day one hour of fun whatever that looks like for you it could be a power walk bicycling jumping in the water painting singing dancing and i think it's uh, it's very important to do that i love Absolutely. that <laughs> mm -hmm. i actually teach my clients in the inner hip club exactly the same i tell them go out there and do whatever it takes i said even if it means sitting down playing Sudoku or doing a crossword puzzle. If that's fun for them, go do it. It's important. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, we, we tend to forget too much how to have fun because we think like we've got to be adult all the time. We've got to be serious. We think about the bills and the job, but uh, there needs to be a balance. We really have to remember how, how we were as, as kids because children don't have any of these blockages in the mind kids just go out there and enjoy themselves and it's so important for us adults to remember that and to tap back into that feeling well i think it's our inner child that loves new beginnings more than like our adult versions um because i guess with me for like new beginnings i always think like blank canvas like i think refreshing like i can do whatever i want with this blank canvas but adult me gets into like fear and worry and tries to pull like this past into my present painting for some reason but inner child me, like, you know, fun heaven, she's like, I can paint whatever I want on this, you know, and like, doesn't even care about that past. So I think it is really important when we're like doing new beginnings, when we're starting new projects, is like connect with the fun of it so that we don't get stuck in like past experiences and live in that fear or that worry or that, you know, because if we're building something with those things in mind, it's not going to be what we want it to be. You know, we have to connect back to that, like true desire, true heart when we're creating something new. At least for me, that's my process, or I try. <laughs> it's all a learning process. Absolutely. So when it comes to um, getting over the hard aspects, the adult aspects of a new beginning, what is it y'all do? I know you keep talking about focusing on the inner child, bringing out that fun teenage love. How do you do that? Well, I think uh, commitment is one of the most important things because we do love things. I remember like jumping from one thing to another one, but when it gets hard because like, okay, let's put it to an example. You want to become an online coach, right? So you do your coaching, um, you, you study somewhere for a year or how long, whatever that takes. You are really inspired, but then it's getting to clients. How do you get the clients? How do you set up a website? How do you do sales calls? And you start hitting a wall every time because you don't know. You might have a coach next to you who is pushing you to the next level because I think this is one of the good things when you have a support system. However, alone, it's uh, extremely difficult. And then we give up on ourselves even before that. And another thing I would say, it's finding your patterns. Okay, let me give you a little tip. If you do have a number seven in your date of birth, that means you were either unwanted, the grandmother didn't want you, 
or they wanted to have you as a different sex. I do have this. So uh, the truth is, um, my dad extremely wanted a boy and because my sister was already up there, so she was not a boy either. And, and I'm coming from this uh, and I came at a really bad time. So I'm coming from rejection. This is my, this is one of my patterns. So I became a people pleaser all my life. And this is very, because we are working with this. It kicks in unworthiness and you don't think you're good enough. And this kicks in in every area of your life. So I think in order to follow your dreams, you got to get down to the roots, find your patterns and get those blocks out of the way to be free. And like I do date myself. This is, I'm all about dating myself. Uh, this is my website. I just bought this beautiful cup. <laughs> it's a China and I'm having this, I don't drink coffee anymore. <laughs> I do drink my hot water in the morning. So the day starts with fun already because I do have a lot of fun with this. And uh, it's extremely important that we know uh, how fun looks like for me, whatever that is. And you put it in your day and you block off time for yourself, which is only for yourself. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I think that is very, very important. And uh, I always tell my ladies I'm working with that as well as blocking off time for themselves, there are ways of like peppering your day with little small mm. bits and pieces of fun. I teach them how to like grab maybe five minutes during the lunch break, yeah, just to even calm down and relax because I'm finding a lot of women don't actually know what fun is for them. I sometimes have to start at the very basic level because they literally wouldn't know what gives them pleasure if if they were just to like try it out. I mean, then it's for me to um, work with them so they actually find what gives them joy in life. And I normally start with the very simple exercise of mindfulness. I teach them how to just take maybe two, three minutes when life gets really, really stressful and do some breathing exercises focus on an object and teach them all the tricks of mindfulness because once they clear their mind through then suddenly they will get all these in insights they they will start channeling messages from spirit god or whatever they call it themselves and uh, it's in those tiny little moments that when they're actually recharging their batteries and actually slowing down a bit that they will suddenly realize oh i really do love painting or hey, I like this song and they start singing and realize they've got a voice. You know, so uh, yeah, it's, it's really important to, uh, to, to teach your clients, I think that they need to focus every day on fun. Even if it sounds weird in the beginning, it's actually like an exercise. You have to deliberately think about fun and focus on fun to then in the end of actually genuinely having fun. Oh, <clears throat> I love the work you do right now. Like I can like hear it when you talk about it, just like these women, like reclaiming their like, oh, I just love it right now. Um, but like that, that is kind of essentially what I was going to say as well is that mindful practice, my thing, I'm a big pros and cons person. So when I'm like struggling with someone, something, I like write down the pros, like, what would I get out of this? Like open mic, for instance, I just sang my first open mic, terrified. So the, that was in the cons terrified um what was in the pros you know like getting my voice out being able to express myself you know da, 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 da. so I had all of these pros and this one or two cons and so it was like I had to and I teach this with my clients as well as like feel into the resistance why is the resistance there because the whole life all of our life is all about duality it's the good and the bad it's the fun and the boring it's the duh and the duh and we have to claim all of it we can't just claim the fun aspect or just you know we have to kind of get under that underlining reason kind of like she was talking about with that meditation that mindfulness it's clearing out the system so when we're feeling that resistance we got to feel into it because the only way through resistance is through resistance 
There's no, you know, magic button to make it go away. So once you feel into it, what is the root cause of it? Is it fear? Is it inadequacy? Is it rejection? Is it, you know, and that's, those are the root problems that we're like healing with this fun, with this creativity, because I'm a big believer that creativity and fun actually heal our spirit heal our soul we're always talking about like oh i grew through pain i grew through pain and it's like you don't always have to you know you can grow through fun you can grow through joy and it's just feeling into your blocks why are you blocking out your abundance why are you you know separating yourself from it and that's what i love about the whole creative process is you get to go through all that um just you know in one painting or one writing one song or singing one song whatever it is but yeah, that's kind of my aspect on that, I guess. Yeah, I love this conversation because I think it, it's even like an overarching theme of like, why do we even have to go to the fundamentals of why we have to talk about what fun is? You know, it's like there's this society's view of success is to work yourself until you're dead. <laughs> like That's yeah. like the way, you know, I feel about it. And like they're like we have all kind of banded together as coaches to say, nope, that's not the only way. Like we will deliberately put things in our lives that are so for us and we are so for everybody else because we've done it differently. And that's what I love about being a coach. And that's why I love like talking to everybody in this group is because it's like recharge is essential and finding out what is fun and self-care for you is not selfish. It's actually essential because it's your well-being and you give your best when you can actually get to the root of what is healthy and good for you and not try to beat yourself up trying to achieve something that is not going to make you happy anyway. So I always just think about it that way. It's like, why do we even have to go back to like figure out what's actually fun? Why can't we even, I don't know. It's just like the societal pressure that I always get like caught up in. But Absolutely. No, that's a great insight. So all of this is about self-empowerment. So we've gone through the paces. We're like, oh my goodness, this is a new beginning. I'm excited. I'm scared. Oh, what's fun about it? We figured that out. Where does community come in this? How does your community help you when it comes to a new beginning? Let me go back to heaven because uh, it really resonated with me. And this is what I teach as well, duality. It's you got to understand there is no good and no bad. It's, it's the same story. And the only way is true. So, well, I'm going to go with my example. You know, we live here in Panama, we live on an island and I was really resisting on driving a boat because uh, yeah. I found that difficult. The stories I was telling, I'm not going to learn it. I don't know how to do it. And there came the day when I was here alone <laughs> and um, I had to do it. So it's at uh, 25 minutes to town and uh, this is not a lake where we live. <laughs> so there is wind and rain and waves <laughs> and whatever, whatever there is. And uh, I was scared. However, I did it anyway, because this, this is the only thing that can take you to the next level. So what I'm saying here, I was singing loud and I was telling myself how good I'm doing this. And I got there and it's not the boating part. It's the docking part, which is really difficult anyway. So and people were watching me and they were concerned if I can do it and all this. And it was kind of funny in the end, but um, so what I'm saying, when fear kicks in and you are really afraid to do something, either a phone call or write an email or just have a conversation, put yourself in your power. Tell yourself that this is your next level and just go for it anyway. And after that, you're going to be so empowered. I felt like a rock star after I did this. And... <laughs> And this is the only way out. And since then, I did it six or seven times alone because I'm pushing myself. So a coach cannot be next to you holding your hand. But this is the practice you can do on a daily basis when it kicks in. Oh, you either scream or dance or whatever. And you tell yourself, and what can go wrong? Nothing. You can only win. So just go for it anyway. 
Yeah, I think of community um, with a new beginning, especially. So the end of 2019, actually, and then end of 2020. So I actually left my marriage in 2019, 2020, got divorced. Um, so that was like the transition, the turning point for me. Um, what I wanted to do moving forward was I, because I actually was up without a job. We had a couple of businesses and things I was working in full time. Um, so then it was like a transition phase for me. Like I knew I wanted to do coaching full time, but had no idea where to start. Um, and then had the opportunity to kind of get certified as a leader, leadership coach and then work full time as a health coach. And there was this voice in the back of my head telling me, you are not good enough to be a leadership coach mm -hmm. because you're divorced. Who's going to believe you? And that was where the community really came in because people in my community, they know who I am. They know I'm so for them. And I had a coach speak into my life and she laughed at me. She was like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? You, you're going to let that stop you. And it was like, it was humbling for me because I was like, okay, like, yeah, it's part of my story, but that's not completely my story. And um, that's not who I am, you know? So it's important to have a, a community surrounding you, people who believe in you and they can see the best in you, they can push you forward. So that's what I always think about community. It's like, you get stuck sometimes in the negative mindset cycles that we tell ourselves, the stories we tell ourselves, the narrative. And unless you have somebody that challenges that narrative, you can get stuck and not move forward. Um, so community is essential. It's incredibly important when we're talking about those new beginnings. Becky, I trust you more as a life coach because you got a divorce. Does that like, <laughs> <laughs> because like seriously, like, and, and that's funny because that's how I kind of learned about community as well was I left a toxic relationship and I was alone for like a year. I just moved to a new town, like didn't know anyone. And I wanted healthy people in my life. So it took that like year of being like, it's not what I want. No, next, you know, like, oh, I don't know about that. And it was these people that were like lifting me up. They were like, yo, like you're good. Like I kept, I didn't even know I wanted to be a coach or anything like that. It was people coming over and being like, you have this wisdom and I would like it. <laughs> and I feel like, oh, okay, like, what do you want to talk about? You know, and it just kind of unfolded. Like, but it's, I really believe when you find the right set of people, that's when your life starts to like amplify and unfold. And it's because they can hold sacred space for you to grow. Mm -hmm. And for you to flourish in a safe environment where you can just express yourself and find out what's you and what's not you and try mm -hmm. on different things. And I, my mentor always talks about it like an anchor because we do a lot of shadow work. We do a lot of like ripping off these old beliefs and getting the fuck rid of them. And oh, sorry, I guess I'm just trying not to do this whole time. <laughs> but just getting rid of all that crap. And you need like an anchor sometimes, someone to tell you when you're like, am I too wild? Am I too wild as a woman? And then be like, no, yeah. no, like you are so amazing, you know, because we get these, these limited beliefs about ourselves that are just wrong. Mm -hmm. And we need that community. We need those people to just get us yeah. away from the problem a little bit. You can't, what is that? You can't solve a problem with the same mind that made the problem in the first place type of situation. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Heaven. I just, yeah, definitely felt a lot more free because there was a lot of confines like within my marriage. And the crazy thing is now like my ex-husband and I are like really good friends. Like we are really good friends. We were never made to be married though. And we like fully even tell each other that we're like, we were never meant to be married, but like we have, we have a really great relationship. So, um, but it was like the moment I left, I could also just like be free to be who I am and not have like the confines of what I was supposed to look like in that particular marriage and like try to be this perfect wife, perfect business owner, perfect everything. Everything came falling down. And it was almost like that new beginning was like healing for me. It's like, it's like exactly what I needed at the point, but yeah. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I definitely think uh, community is really important because uh, especially in those years when I was hitting the road as a musician, as you may imagine, I didn't have a lot of community because you're never settling anywhere for long enough or never staying anywhere for long enough to make proper friends. And uh, Life can get very hard if you don't have that support system and that backup. And even though I ended up in a small circle of friends, obviously the band members and the very immediate family, um, that's not really the same as having a proper big support system as people who will have your bug or people you can go to and ask for advice. And um, 
I found since settling now in, in, in the last 10 years, we have actually finally stayed in one place, bought a property and have settled. Um, and we're building up all these networks and starting to have community, starting to have friends. Life is definitely accelerating, going up several levels in quality as well. And uh, yeah, it is just so important. I'm, I've been feeling it myself through my own personal journey and uh, I wouldn't want to miss my circle of friends and my community now for the world. It's very important. That's amazing. You've traveled so far and your community was where you landed at the end. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I think that's some, some, uh, something I've learned as well, the lesson that um, your home is, is truly where your heart is because when, when, especially when you are living a lifestyle where you are traveling a lot, obviously you haven't got the, um, the physical route so much, but you can build up a community um, from the heart. You know, you will find the people to connect with. And uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I've found for years when we were just floating, traveling, I mean, we were true gypsies in the traveling sense. Um, life was just always fast, but there was always something missing. There was a certain quality missing, which you don't notice when you are actually wrapped up in this thing, because especially like the rock and roll life is quite fast, you know, always always on the go late night, always partying. But you don't really notice there is that quality of, uh, yeah, the quality of connection is missing, I think. that That's the one thing. And when you're starting to settle down and slow down a bit and take the time to connect with the community, you suddenly realize how much more quality you've got in your daily life. Absolutely. Well, thank you all so much for those insights. Is there anything Can I go with the community? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry for the delay. So anyway, uh, community is a foundation. When I had enough of my own bullshit, I actually enrolled to a leadership program as well. And it was an online program. And through this program, we worked through our traumas unhealed things, shadow work, whatever belongs. And um, we still keep in contact. So this is my foundation, my community, where I reach out on a daily basis. Because many times we get stuck and then we are, we are unsure. We don't know who we are for a little time. However, these people, who you open your heart together with and went through a lot of stuff online or in person, they can hold your hand in those moments. And as I am a coach and I still have a coach and that's normal because a coach needs a coach as well. Uh, taking me to the next level, I have not been, I haven't got there and now I'm really looking forward to it. And Yes, community is your foundation. However, you get to kick yourself on a daily basis as well. <laughs> 100%, thank you. All right, so is there anything anyone wants to say about new beginnings when it comes to self-empowerment before we get to the question section from our live audience? I would say don't ever fear a new beginning if it comes after something um, that is like stressful or that is like a hard time. Don't ever fear the new beginning because you have the opportunity to make the new beginning something better than before. Um, I think sometimes when we see something happening um, that's traumatic in our lives and we decide something new, there's, there's a lot of fear that goes with that fear and doubt of what the future holds or what it looks like. But connecting to um, like a spiritual power or God or whatever, and just kind of having that hope can kind of catapult you to the next level. And don't ever fear reaching out to somebody who you look at as a mentor or a coach because they are willing to help you. 
Um, so just reaching out sometimes and building that community yourself, don't ever fear doing that because people want to help you. I have chills from you saying that, thank you. <laughs> no, I really like that, that um, it just reminds me of like, so I do a lot of work with tarot and we get the death card a lot and not a lot, but you know, we get that and clients are like, oh, my god it's a death card and i'm like that's it's funny because it's not that scary it's more death and rebirth that's the whole process death and rebirth death and rebirth it's a letting go of to bring in something new something better and so it's like i love that don't fear it because it's always it's constantly happening it's that constant cycle we have in life like it's all around us winter and then summer and the plants and the animal it's all around us so it's like you know of course you're gonna go through that so it's don't fear it. And then also don't beat yourself up if you miss a rebirth because it's coming back around. Like if you're like, you know what, this time I'm not going to change anything right now. That's okay for a little bit. Like that is okay. I, I know I've beat myself up so many times because I'm like, I missed an opportunity. And it's like, no, no. Like just trust that you're exactly where you should be right now. And I'll come back around if it's meant for you, you know? I love that. That is that is so true because it's like me myself waiting for the time. When will I get on my path? I was so <laughs> not patient about this. And we are always on our path. We cannot go off our path. So this is this is a constant walking to your soul, what you what you came here to learn, to actually connect to your true self and and this is this is what it is and sometimes your soul feels tired then you gotta take a break but you're gonna feel the calling again to go on and um implement some tools uh in your day what works for you and those tools can give you a comfort so i'm gonna share a couple it's um what i do in the morning i hug myself before I get out of bed. Uh, I thank my body that my body is supporting me. And I tell one nice thing to myself before I start a day. And this is already sets the energy, the intention. And I like touching my heart as well to drop into my heart and get out of bed because we are so good at that. <laughs> That is precious. Thank you for sharing that. All right. It is everyone ready to go and see what our audience has to say? Sure. Yep. <laughs> All right. All right. So if anyone happens to have a question right now, I see we have Stacy, Sean, and Phoenix. Is there any questions that you'll have for any of us that involve self-empowerment and new beginnings? Um, is there any comments? Phoenix, you can come off mute. Hey, thank you. Uh, first, I wanted to say you guys have given some really wonderful advice um, and I, I really appreciate all of your insights. Um, early on, you all were talking about, uh, you know, working through resistance, moving through resistance. Um, and then, you know, how important self-care is in that and how self-care isn't selfish. It's something that, you know, is really important to work with that journey. Um, how do you handle when self-care changes to a new beginning? Like, how, how do you discover new ways to care for yourself um, when your old routine don't work for you anymore? Mm. So is the question, how do you discover new ways to care for yourself. Is that right? Mm -hmm. okay. So I've actually had this come up a lot in my life. Um, it seems like some things work for a certain amount of time and then they don't work one day or like one week. Uh, like one of my things I do a lot is yoga in the morning. 
And sometimes I just don't want to yoga in the morning. Um, and it actually frustrates me more than it helps me at times. Um, so I'm just very fluid about my self-care, knowing that like the world is ever changing. So sometimes my self-care routine has to be ever changing as well. Um, so I'm always just trying new things and adopting new things and taking note of how they're making me feel. Um, because that's the thing, it's kind of like an allergy test, but with your self-care routine. Um, so asking yourself, is this helping me still? Is this still helping me? Because if it's not, I'm gonna need to start trying new things on. And it's not like you cast those things out of your tool belt. belt. It's more like, I'm gonna try that maybe at a different time or in a different setting or in a different place. So it's a lot of trial and error to try and get your routine the way that you want it to make you feel because that's the point, right? You're supposed to feel good about your self-care routine, not like it's almost like this burden. So that's why it's really good to know thyself in those um, instances and get to know thyself a little bit better um, when you're trying on different things. I hope that answered the question. <sighs> I love what you said, Heaven. I think it's honestly, and I've been in the same same kind of a thing. I use you know different exercises, exercises and things, but um, I always told myself like I wasn't a runner. Well, then at 35 years old, I'm like, you know, it's a great time for me to start running. Why not? So I started running, and then I had never run more than like three miles. And then I was like, you know, I'm going to try to push myself to four, and I thought I was going to die. <laughs> so it was awful. But then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to set myself up to do a half marathon. Well, then COVID hit. So like I couldn't even do a half marathon, right? So, but I still kind of trained myself to run because I wanted mental toughness. I wanted just to try to do something that was really physically hard for myself. Um, but there was also a period of time, like after training, I'm like, running is just not suiting me anymore. I'm not getting fulfilled from it. So I switched to doing yoga and I switched to doing stretching and just some other lighter things that were like suiting for my body at the time. So exactly what you said though it's like being willing to be open to all self-care routines and trying something different so maybe for you it's like taking a bath it's journaling it's like talking to friends it's um going for a long walk do you connect with nature do you connect with like being around people when you're hurting what does that look like and for each type of um thing that you're going through it may look a little different right if you're going through like a relationship stress or issue maybe i need to talk to somebody about it because processing out loud can be really helpful in healing if it's um you're going through something um like health related it may be you know what i'm really stressed out right now my job is causing me a lot of stress so how do you manage that stress um and that can be like adult coloring books or it can be um, reading, it can be a variety of different self-care tools that you have, but just being open to finding a list of things that I've worked in the past and also a new list of things that you want to be willing to try. So being open to trying something new can be incredibly healing and powerful too, because you just see something in a new light. It, it shifts your perspective. So just being open to that Phoenix. Um, so yeah, just wishing you the best on that. Cause it is challenging. Heaven and I both know it sometimes it sucks when things don't work that you've tried so many times, but you can do it. Uh, this is wonderful what the lady said before it's you got to keep on experimenting I don't think anybody can tell you what works for you however you know that yourself so for example I used to belong to a club so I used to meditate in the morning but then I realized this is my I'm a morning person I can wake up between five and six and I can actually work. This is, I get a lot of downloads. This is the best time for me when everybody else is sleeping. So what I do now, I do a power walk, a really quick power walk, and then I start learning, working. So what is your cycle? What is your most active time? Uh, you know all of this and work with that, how you can combine that with your self-care. So, you get creative, you get downloads, and you get going on whatever you want to get going. I agree with everything that these lovely ladies have said. It's very important to switch up your routine and try new things. But there's also one thing I find that makes a big difference. Sometimes doing absolutely nothing is the best mm. self-care you can give yourself mm. because then we're all very much wrapped up in this idea we've got to be doing. We're a doing society. So self-care means I've got to go to yoga. I've got to go to this class. I've got to go running now. I've got to uh, go to my painting class. And this afternoon, I'm joining a Zoom meeting and so on. So 
we're actually creating more and more pressure on ourselves through our self-care system. So um, I think it's important that you then sit down and see what works, what doesn't work. And if, for example, going to a yoga class stresses you out because it puts time pressure on your already full day, then just don't do it. And some days it's perfectly okay to just wake up in the morning and say to yourself, today I'm resting. If you can and, and your work allows, just take the day off, do absolutely nothing and even vegging out in front of Netflix on the sofa is perfectly fine if that's what your mind and your body and your soul need on that particular day. So I, I, I think you just need to work out for yourself how much time you can invest without stressing yourself out and then working within your own personal limits. Mm. That's absolutely wonderful. All of y'all have wonderful insight. And Phoenix, does that answer your question? Absolutely. Thank you all for that. that I needed to hear that. All right. Well, thank you so much for your question. Stacy. Hi, thank you so much for inviting us today and um, for the time that everybody's put in. It's been really interesting. I've sat here like making loads and loads of notes. So really, I've been on a massive journey of my own, both personally, emotionally, financially, spiritually, probably most recently over the last couple of years. But I think it's been building for a long time. Um, and this year I've kind of started to connect with the tarot decks and the oracle decks and I've started to feel like I've connected much more with the real authentic version of myself. For years my, my, like my, my background is management but for me I've always really known that the most fulfilling part of those roles has been the support and the relationships that I've been able to offer to the teams that I've led and worked with that for me has always been the bit that's made my job worthwhile and I feel like I'm on the cusp of some sort of major shift in terms of being able to live out my purpose but I kind of feel like I need um, a careers advisor from the spiritual side of the way that we view the world I don't fit into the traditional versions anymore so I'm kind of looking for some advice about how to connect and work out what that looks like and how to really step into this new me that I'm so much more comfortable with and and happier with and I guess I feel like I'm sat in front of a whole load of experts so I would despite my anxiety and nerves be stupid not to ask this question Absolutely. Sorry, I tend to talk too much. <laughs> no, you were just fine. You just letting us know how you feel, that's all. Any wonderful advice? So I will say, I'll, okay. So I spent 15 years, like I've so been a physician assistant for 15 years. Um, so as I mentioned, like nine years ago, I was in the middle of a cardiology practice and was just trying to help my clients and my patients get healthy. And I had no idea. I thought like I was going to go back to school to be a dietitian. I'm like, okay, I'm going to help them do something. Like, I just feel like I need educated a little bit better in order to help them. So just took this, you know, course, got certified as a health coach. Well, then, um, found out that that was the most fulfilling time that I've ever spent with a group of people. So our group coaching had about seven or eight patients that would just come after hours. Once a week, we'd talk about health, talk about how their routines were changed and habits were changed. So fast forward, went through the leadership thing. My life was a whole mess. I hated my life, I hated getting up every day because I was in the middle of like doing real estate I was, I had a lot of pressure on myself at that point. Um, and then going into like a coaching experience really helped me define my core values and finding out like freedom was a core value that I had and personal development and um, integrity and faith. Like those are my four core values. I look at this in the lens of, I can define my core values. Does this fit into who I am now? So then when my marriage fell apart and I kind of shed off all those things that were pressure for me, like the real estate co you know, company I was expected to kind of run, the party rental company I was expected to run, being a PA, being everything to everyone else. And I looked at who I was as a person and I looked at my core values. I'm like, I'm not doing anything related to my core values. 
So then I had the opportunity and the choice to kind of say, okay, I'm a health coach. And I know that was the most empowering experience that I've ever had. And I want to do that again. So what do I do with this knowledge now? So finding a company that I could work with that my core values aligned is what I did first. And then I start offering my services to other people. Like I love leadership coaching because it allowed me to work with people, help them develop their personality um, and like really understand their core values. So it was a huge shift for me going from like corporate to like, not corporate, I guess, but more like medical world where you make a, like six figures, you make a good amount of money towards making like nothing, but I was so much happier. Like, okay, money is not a driver for me. It's purpose. My purpose is a complete driver for me. And I know that now. So I would rather do that than be held at the standard society and try to kill myself being happy for somebody else, you know? So you have the knowledge now. It sounds like you kind of understand who your authentic self is. So it's like, what do you do with that? So you're at this crossroads right now of making a decision and making a shift towards being who you are. And that will present itself. There's opportunity there. So it's just being awake to that opportunity, Stacey. So I, I applaud you for kind of understanding that the pressure that society has on you is not who you are. Um, and I'll be anxious to see who this person develops into because it's going to be somebody beautiful and fulfilled. And you're going to be able to share that with everybody else around you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I have to agree with her as well. Um, because it does sound like you're like waking up to a part of yourself that I don't want to say has been sleeping, but hasn't been in the driver's seat. And it's like Definitely. that part of you is like waking up, especially with the, using cards and astrology. Like that's my, that was like my main, like, um, I guess intuition, like upload or whatever. Like that's when my intuition turned on and I was like, whoa, I can feel through my life like this instead of, you know, navigating down the streets that they gave me. It was like, I was like finally flying and I was also in management. And it sounds like even with your management job right now, you're feeling the core of that, like what you love about that. And it's that community aspect. It's the connection it's the helping other people. So it's like, now you have that in your toolbox, you know, you're kind of one of your core values. And I would have to agree work, working with a coach to help me set up those values that I had as well was one of the best things that I ever did for myself because if we can set up and like look at, all right, so this is one value, this is another value, this is another value. And it helps you like kind of align your path a little bit more. So then when you're presented with a situation, you're like, just like she was talking about, just like, is this aligned with my values or not? And then it helps you to make those decisions. And that helps you to tap into that intuition more too, because I'm a firm believer in intuitions, a muscle. And the more we use it, the more we listen to it, the louder it gets. And it gets to a point where we just can't ignore it. Um, and I also believe that fear and limiting beliefs are a little bit louder than our intuition at times. So we tend to not listen to it in our society. Our whole society actually is based on us not listening to our intuition. So it's sometimes really hard unless you're put in a container or a community to really listen to yourself. Um, You've just described exactly where I am in life right now in terms of my, for years, I've known in my gut there's something and I've always overridden it with those negative self thoughts. I must be crazy. I must be wrong. I, you know, this is not what I really feel. And I've stripped away so much. I'm probably in what would best be described as hermit mode in my life right now. I've closed off the outside world. I live in a little bubble, which can't exist like this forever. I have to find a way to make this my life because I know that this is what I'm meant to do. Helping people is why I'm here. I just don't know how to go from trapped behind my self-limiting thoughts Mm -hmm. to my potential Sh shadow work <laughs> that's the only thing I, I that's what I hear too is like the whole process of shadow work is like going inwards and getting yourself in that bubble because you're yeah. getting rid of all the crap that doesn't yeah. mean anything and then as you rise out and like get rid of more crap and start connecting to people that are actually authentic and opportunities that are actually authentic. It's like, that's when you start stepping into alignment and these things just start coming at you and you're like, all righty universe, get, I get the hint. So it's really I feel so close. So close. 
since Lionsgate Portal on Sunday, I've done so much shadow work and I this call has made me go back and think about shadow work. I've got so much excitement for it and so much fear, but I feel so close to the edge of change. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we're all right there too. We're all right there. I want you to know you're not alone in that feeling because we're all just right there. Yeah. So Stacy, uh, I want to offer you something. So if you give me your date of birth, I will happily give you your main talent for this life. Whatever <gasps> you have inside. And I want to tell you one more thing. Uh, you can send it via chat to me if you can do that. Uh, yeah. While uh, Silke is going to talk, I work with the numbers a little. And the other thing I want to tell you, it's your body is the feminine. So whatever your body tells you, that's the truth. The, the, the head, the mind is the masculine. So like whenever your body feels yes, that's a yes. Okay. So don't, don't go with your mind. This is a really good tool that helped me as well. So uh, go ahead with the with the message if you want to do that and then i'd love to thank you why don't uh aliko you tell everyone where uh we can find you and then that way we can start wrapping up and uh okay we all can connect together and have a great one-on-one -on -one conversation all right then let's do that so well just uh shoot me a message because we are all thank tagged you. in uh, on facebook and i will do that for you okay thank you so much thank you so much for everybody's comments and feedback it's been amazing it's exactly what i needed right now in this moment you're welcome good luck thank good you luck. <laughs> you're gonna do great thank you thank you so much for organizing this <laughs> absolutely cool I am excited to say that we are at the top of the hour and that concludes our hour here together today. I am thrilled to death to have gotten the chance to talk to all of you and we've been able to help two wonderful people. And now let's let everyone know where we can find you. Uh, Aliko, since you're already gonna be talking okay. to the wonderful Stacy, why don't you go first? So I do have a website, it's uh, Dating Yourself. However, just um, we are all tagged in in Facebook. So if you're interested uh, or you want to have a one-on-one -on -one free call to, to know a little bit about your soul pad, just shoot me a message and we'll make it work. Also, um, we are hosting uh, a beautiful event. Uh, it's Permission to Prosper next Friday. It's a three-day live event. So on my Facebook group, we would love to have you for our event. Thank you. All right, all right. Silk? Uh, you can get in touch with me through my website. It's uh, innerhippiebooks.com. And you can also get in touch again through the chat here and it will all be uh, passed on the messages and uh, I, you can also find me on Facebook it's just silky.harvey and uh, yeah there is lots coming up in my world as well I would love to uh, give you some more advice there is also uh, I always do free coaching for a, a half an hour um, talk to find out if there's anything I can help you with so um, if you're interested, just get in touch. Thank you. All right. Becky? Yeah, so I actually have a website too. Um, it's just beckywolf.com. And you can find me on Instagram at Becky Wolf Coaching, um, and on Facebook under the Self Empowerment Podcast. <laughs> all right, all right. And Heaven? Um, I have a website. It's the heavenlyenergy.com. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, Facebook, TikTok, all of the socials um, for the Heavenly Energy YouTube. Um, the best way to contact me, though, is on the Facebook page, the Heavenly Energy. And I also do free discovery calls for one on one mentorship, not on the website yet, but I am offering it. Um, and that's just to set up a container for things like shadow work and different aspects like that. So yeah, just come talk to me. I'd love that. All right. Thank you all so much for being here today. As always, my name is Catherine and I'm your cottage witch. And I'm thrilled to death to be able to present
this podcast a self-empowerment project. And you can find me on Facebook at Your Cottage Witch, YouTube at Your Cottage Witch, TikTok and Instagram also at Your Cottage Witch. <laughs> and you can join the Facebook group at Self Empowerment Project Love. All right. Well, thank you all so much for today. I love you all dearly. I love your insight. And I'm so glad we got to help people together. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, everybody. Thank, thank you. you so much for having us. It was wonderful. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs>